Hi there, you nine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to now um, start to understand how we can use the cubist style in our work when we're working from direct observation. Okay, so if you are developing, you're going to draw the outline and you're going to add some of the small details. You're probably going to focus on the majority of the um, larger outline shapes. If you're meeting, you'll draw the um, outline and you'll focus on um, adding the really quite small details, the patterns, etc., the reflections of light from your bottle. If you're exceeding, or you'll draw the smaller shaped as well as the smaller shapes as well as the larger shapes. So you'll start adding in even more detail. Okay, so I'll talk you through that as we're doing it. So first of all, what you need to do. Okay, so you need to do what I've done here. You need to select two objects that you can find in your bag. So I found here a bottle and a banana. Okay, these are two items that I found in my bag. And you can see just there that I've got a couple of other items, things that you might have in your bag as well. So a key fob, um, a, another bar, an apple. And I've got here a whiteboard pen. So what I want you to do is, first of all, is select six items from your bag that you can draw. Try and make it, or try and find objects that are a bit more complicated to draw. So, because it makes it a bit easier, strangely. So things that have um, got nice, irregular shapes, outlines, and so on. So I've got the, here this whiteboard pen, because the... The top of it is a little bit different. Okay, I am aware that some of you will be quite limited by what you've got in your bag. Hence, I've just got a banana. Some of you might have packets of crisps, for example. Okay, If you only have two items, then please don't worry. All right, but try and find three, all right, even if you just add in a pen. Okay, so first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to set up your objects like I've done here on your table so that we can see them all right now we don't just want to put our objects okay quite boring quite plain all right together we we might try and arrange them so there's a little bit more shape maybe you can balance your banana if you've got um water in it etc okay i'm going to make it nice and easy okay for a developing student we can just place them together okay so first of all you are only going to draw a line drawing of your object and you're going to fill your entire page. All right. So we're going to have 10 minutes and we're going to draw the objects as quickly as we possibly can. I'm not going to do it in 10 minutes. I'm going to try and do it a little bit quicker than that, just so that um, this video doesn't go on for ages. All right. So copy what I'm doing. You can start drawing now if you've got your objects already. Otherwise, pause the video so that students, so you can find your objects, put them on your table, then start it again because I'm about to start drawing. Okay. So looking at my bottle. Okay. I'm going to try not to do too much sketching here. So get cracking with your first drawing and please do try and take up as much of the page as you possibly can. If you draw this one a bit smaller, don't worry, your next one can be that little bit bigger. Don't add any shading at the moment. Press on nice and lightly with your pencil. I'm going to press on just that bit heavier just so that you can see me on the video. Try and get your drawing as accurate as you can in this time that you've got. If you finish drawing within the first 10 minutes, okay, then just, okay, just carry on. Try and look for those smaller shapes. So at the moment, I'm only drawing the outline. Okay, 
Now, my bottle, if you look at this, is actually a bit big. Okay, if you do the same, you're drawing a bit too big. Don't worry. Because just, just take it off the page. Now, I can tell here that my shape is not perfect at the moment. That's not a major issue. Because if you notice a lot of um, the work is it's all a bit fragmented and broken up anyway. <clears throat> well, I can't quite fit my banana on. But it does come around the bottle like that. So I'll just make it fit onto my page like so. Okay, now if I've got a little bit of extra time, I can see inside of my shape. So this is now developing. Right. I can see inside of my object lots and lots of reflections. I can also see some lettering. Don't need to worry too much about the lettering. That's a little bit too small. These little marks in the banana, for example. Okay, they're a bit too small. So... What I want you to do is focus on the big shapes, all right? So inside of here, you can see a nice dark shape where the shadow's cast in. So I'm just going to draw that in. And then, then some lighter shapes here. Again, don't draw the really, really small ones. Just draw the medium ones, and I'll explain why shortly. I'm just adding in all of the shadows, all of the main highlights, and I am going to add in the pattern on the bottle here. I'm just going to add in this highlight here. And maybe a few of these lighter bits. And one of the lines on the banana. Okay. So spotting these shapes here. Right. That is on the verge of exceeding. Okay, all these highlights, the bits of light, and so on. Okay. If you pause the video now and allow everyone to work for the last few minutes just to try and perfect their drawing, and then I'll show you the next demonstration. Okay, step number two. Okay, is you're now going to turn your page around okay, and you're going to select two different objects. So here, okay, I'm going to draw this bar and I'm going to draw the apple. Okay, one is quite complicated, put the two together okay, and the other one is really quite easy, All right, which is the apple. And now what we're going to do is you're going to redraw or you're going to draw those two objects over the top okay, of your um, previous drawing. Now you can draw them wherever you want. All right, I've got quite a lot of space here, so I'm going to draw okay, my apple. I'm going to move my um, apple along a little bit, okay, so that my apple would go up in the corner and my bar would go along here. Okay, so, and then all, this, you, all you do is you just start drawing. Okay, try and forget that you have got another object on your page. Okay, and spend about, so again, about 10 minutes just drawing in your large and small shapes. So on this apple, I'll draw some of the patterns in, really basic, all the red around the edge okay. and then I'll put my eat natural bar 
Okay, I'm just going to move that a little bit actually. I'm going to move it so it's a little bit closer to the apple so that it takes up this space here. Again, you can start, get cracking. Don't be tempted to put in the lettering of your bar or your um, sweet wrapper and so on. Otherwise, it will make it very, very hard for you at the next stage. Just concentrate on the larger shapes. Okay, the medium shapes, light, etc., etc. Try and get the creases in. Try not to sketch too much, otherwise you'll find that your um, image becomes too complicated with all these lines. So try and keep your lines reasonably straightforward, but at the same time you do need to sketch. I don't want a solid line like that. Okay, it's going to be hard for you to draw this in. And get it absolutely accurate in the short space of time. So just see what you can do. So I'm going to put a few more creases in here. I'm going to get a few more shapes of light in. Might put a few of the patterns in without putting the lettering in. Okay. Now I know that uh, Zhuang Gui, he uses, and the Cubist artists, they use um, well, uh, musical instruments as inspiration. Okay, it is, they, they still do quite a lot of other work where it's still life. It just so happens that the one we've looked at um, has got musical instruments in it. So if you have a musical instrument, feel free to draw that, of course. Okay. And at this point, pause your video. Or pause this video. Give um, everyone a chance to get their drawing as accurate as they can. And we'll move on to step two, three. Okay, step three. Now we're going to select our final two objects. Uh, if you only have one object at this point, don't worry, then we can add in the um, last object. A set of keys is quite nice, but if you have uh, quite a large key uh, fob, then um, maybe just concentrate on drawing one key because that is quite a complicated shape. So I'm going to leave my pen because on my key fob, I've got two items, the little mini snooker ball and my key. So I'll put that to one side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my paper, my sketchbook around again. I'm going to put my objects in a position where I think it's going to be uh, perfect. So I've switched, swapped, swapped my key around because this is quite a complicated shape. And here I haven't really got many shapes, whereas here I've got quite a lot of shapes, so it'd be a lot easier to draw the ball there. All right, so I'm not going to go too crazy with all the shapes in the ball because otherwise I'm going to overlap them a bit too much and I'll have too many patterns here. All right, so I'll start off then drawing my um, little mini snooker ball in. Okay, again, I'm not going to add in too many patterns. I'm not going to add in the number okay, because I think it was just overcomplicated. There'll be too many shapes there. Okay, but I will put in the pattern. Okay, uh, the, the pattern of the snooker ball. And now I'll add in where the key fob joins it. So get cracking with your third drawing. If at this point you still haven't finished um, the second stage, then it doesn't matter about moving on to the third one.
you just concentrate on the second stage. So what we're looking here for is you creating a very, very broken up picture, a fragmented picture. It's very cube-like. It's very, very similar to the cubist artwork. Okay, that is why we're overlapping them quite a lot. Hopefully at this point you can see how all of these um, cubic geometric shapes have been created just by overlapping quite a lot of objects. It's very tempting to put in the um, red lettering on my key. But try not to overcomplicate things. You want to add enough shapes, but not too many. Okay, at that point, if you feel that you've got a bit too much space here or here and you would like to add something else in, please do feel free. Okay, however, I'm quite happy with how broken up that picture is now. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of time, if you pause the video again, I'll give you a bit of time just to complete your third drawing. And then we'll move on to step four. Okay, step four. Now this is line drawing. Okay, we don't want to have in our line drawing okay, too many chaotic shaded lines. Right, you will have a look at the PowerPoint shortly and we'll have a look and see how many of you have added shading. If at this point you've accidentally added shading, you've got a bit carried away with your lovely drawing skills, then don't worry, just give it a rub out. All right, hopefully you've not pressed on too hard. All right, because we don't want any shading in this at this present moment in time. Okay, what I now want you to do is we're going to use a pencil. If at this point you've got a nice thin black gel pen or very, very thin ink pen, you might find that outlining it in a black ink pen all right, will work for you. All right, pencil would be ideal. If your lines are quite chaotic, I am more than happy for you to get yourself a black biro or ballpoint pen like this one. And you can actually outline your lines with the black pen. And I want you to take your time with this. Okay. Please don't use a blue pen. If you don't have a black pen, if you prefer to write with a, um, a, a blue pen, then um, just use pencil. All right. You could do exactly the same with the pencil. All right, but black pen's fine. And the reason why we're using black is because if you look back at uh, Joanne Gris' work, you will find that um, he uses a lot of black outliners. Please don't use a whiteboard pen. All right, I just want you to have a nice thin black outline. Okay, and all you're going to do is you're just going to very delicately go over every single line. Now, if you see how I'm outlining now, You'll notice that um, I'm almost like sketching the lines. I don't want you to just do a single line and rush this, please. Okay. So if you get cracking now, I will do the same and I'll outline it in black. If you're doing this in pencil, that's absolutely fine. You just do it so that your pencil lines are just that little bit darker. Okay, so you might press on quite hard with your pencil. And some of you don't might not want a black outline, that's absolutely fine. So you're going over every single line. Okay. 
Here you can see where I've got a sketched line, so I'm just going to leave that one out. So make sure you're only going over the lines that work with the drawing. Hopefully all of your lines are connected to one another. Therefore forming these nice geometric shapes. You see there when my lines maybe not quite met up with the other one, don't worry about that. A lot of the cubist work is very fragmented anyway. If you see you've got two lines that are really, really close together, you can use your artistic judgment and make a decision as to whether you're going to add that one in or whether you're going to leave it out so that you have a bit more of a larger shape.
So some of these shapes here are a bit too close together because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some really fancy mark making skills inside of some of these shapes. So we don't want them to be too small like this one here. It's a bit too small that. So if you are in that position, just just use your artistic creativity skills just to make them a bit larger. Because they've been fragmented, broken up anyway by um, overlapping everything, then um, it doesn't matter too much if you miss out a couple of lines. So if you think about how you angry you and Greece's work as um what it looks like, you'll see there's quite a lot of different textures, different marks inside every single section. You know, some are dark, some are a bit speckled, some have got dots in them, you know, some are shaded nicely, some are block colour black. Okay, what we're going to be doing is inside each one of these shapes is we're going to be creating different different textures, different marks, and so on, using shading. Okay, that's why we've broken it up. We're practicing working in the style of our artist by drawing objects from still life, things that are in front of us. Okay, I know I haven't finished all of my um, lines, however, what I would like you to do is when you have gone over with all of your lines, so I'll leave this bit for now, you're going to get yourself a rubber and you're just going to rub out all of your pencil lines. If you have used a pencil to darken some of your lines, okay, then all you need to do is just use the weight of the rubber to take off some of the lighter lines. You might need to be a little bit more careful with how you rub out, okay? But if you used a pen, you can just go all over and get rid of all of your pencil lines. And then that is completely and utterly ready for next lesson.